here we have the opportunity to see two very different uh, felsic uh, lava flows. One is the one there at the, at the, at the top. This is an Indian bride that comes from the pre-Cañadas, pre the old Cañadas volcano. It has 2.2 2, 2 million years old. 2.2 million years yeah, old, this yeah. Is the, the big uh, Cañadas volcano that then collapsed, made the Caldera de las Cañadas. And that's a big Indian bride up there. Exactly. I mean, it's very massive. Very massive. And then the, the Cañadas volcano collapsed, made the Caldera de las Cañadas, in, uh, nested in that, caña, in that caldera grew the Teide and the Pico Viejo, and this monolithic lava come from this late episode. It lava to our right. It's only 6,000 years old. It's a very thick phonolithic lava that, as you see, they are one over the other, stepping towards the sea and making the island of Tenerife. This is massive phonolite lavas. They are. They so this is a large from, volume. They come from parasitic vents around the base of Teide Volcano. Is that right? And they've been flowing all the way down from the area around normally, Teide? Normally this phonolithic flow, uh, flow for a very short distance. But yes. on this occasion they flow more than 15 kilometers. Because they are kind of not fluid, but they are they move easily, so they get they reach the sea. Even when they reach the sea, they turn and make a very nice feature because still they have a flow capacity. They have low viscosity because and they still can viscosity. flow beyond also there. Also because they make very big uh, channels and the channels in some way protect, keep the temperature of the lava higher and therefore they, they are fluid, more fluid, and they can easily flow. And maybe they have high volatiles as well, I don't exactly. know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, I think that could explain it potentially, but magnificent, massive funnelites awesome. here that reach the sea. Yeah. And uh, some of them, you were saying, were turning around when they hit yeah. the sea? When they get to the coast and meet with the sea, uh, they get uh, cooling, they get more... Uh, less fluid so that what they made is a turn to continue flowing for a, for a, another distance so Sergio is just showing me some sketches here so here this is how it might look where uh, it comes down and then when it hits the sea it might actually chill a little bit and then it might turn and then it makes a lava delta fantastic and, and also where is the phonolite the the in bright is the the frontera of the of the collapse of the, yeah. the, the slice. Yes. The landslide. That in this the is, belongs to the pre collapse, so it's marking the border of the collapse. collapse. Wonderful. So we have quite a bit of geological history here. Thank you very much, Juan Carlos. Thank you very much, Sergio. This is wonderful. Not to mention that the scenery is also very nice here. What a fantastic blue sea and a fantastic coastal cliff. And uh, yes, this is the brochure that you worked on. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sergio. <clears throat> Good, and you can download this brochure at the uh, museum, the uh, Muna Museum, um, the Museum of Natural History uh, from La Laguna, and uh, there is a PDF available of these brochures there. Is from, that right? From Santa Cruz. From Santa Cruz, yes, sorry. Yes, not La Laguna, Santa Cruz. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So, and I say bye-bye as well, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Fantastic phonolite lavas here, really massive major eruptions, and these are only 6,000 years old. So, I think there is a bit of a concern that eruptions of this magnitude may reoccur here on the island, but luckily, there is no indication of any renewed eruptive activity at the present day. And let's hope it stays like this for quite a bit longer. Thank you very much. Those here with saying, uh, well, what a fantastic island it is. All the best. Bye-bye.